Lesson 3.2 Ethical Obligations Truth, Accuracy, and Fairness Now that you understand what ethics or the right things to do are and why they are important, you need to get familiar with the very specific set of ethics that are a part of being a journalist and writing and publishing news and other information that real people will read or view. This lesson is going to give you a brief overview of the main ethical concepts that journalists use, but you'll want to study and research the official code of ethics published by the Society of Professional Journalists on your own in order to have a better understanding. In William Shakespeare's famous play Hamlet, Shakespeare writes, To be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. This is the goal of a journalist, to be that one honest man or woman in a world full of dishonesty. And that's where we start with journalism ethics. When you're working as a journalist on any level, you must commit yourself to the ethics of and accuracy in everything you do. This means things like making sure that Everything you write or produce is both true and accurate. Even if you have to follow up on information that sources give you and confirm that what they told you is true and accurate. As a journalist, you can never simply say, well, that's what my source told me, it must be true. You must fact check and double check to make sure what you publish is true and accurate. Even if it's accidental, you must take the responsibility for anything that is untrue that you publish. And of course, misleading, lying, or making something up on purpose is never acceptable and is the highest form of unethical behavior. And whether you're working as a high school journalist or professional, any such action would result in your immediate loss of job or removal from staff will give you the boot. This doesn't stop at just interviews and news stories either. Your job is to make sure that headlines, tweets, or comments to get people to read or watch your stories are honest, accurate, and truthful as well. Even the photos, sound bites, quotes, and graphics should be accurate and not mislead or trick people in any way. In fact, while it might be valued in like art, photography, or film classes, when it comes to journalism, it is never okay to Photoshop, distort, or change what's in a photo or video. You can enhance the photo to make it clearer or easier to see, but you can never change who or what is in it or how they're in it, and you must always label anything that is a photo illustration so you don't mislead people. This example here shows how two photos on the bottom were merged and altered digitally on the top to create a new photo. That is highly unethical because it tells a different story of the events that happened. And it may look cooler or get your point across better, but it's very unethical because that's not actually what was going on. Even if you believe what you're doing is like funny or harmless, you shouldn't do it. Sometimes students will want to Photoshop a team member in who missed a team photo or some other seemingly harmless addition or subtraction, but that is never allowed and it's a major violation of journalism ethics. Now, let's say that you had this great moment where you saw an epic prom proposal at practice, but your camera malfunctioned and you couldn't get video footage of it, so later in the day you asked the couple and those involved to reenact the event and you record it and then make it a part of a broadcast later. This is okay, right? Wrong. You should always avoid misleading reenactments or staged and posed news events, photos, or videos. If you absolutely have to stage or reenact something in order to tell the story, you are required to label it as a reenactment. In general, you should never take shortcuts or publish anything that is misleading. Sometimes advertisers attempt to mislead their audience into thinking an ad is a news story when it's just an ad. This is highly unethical, and the publishers are required to label it as a paid-for advertisement in most cases, even if they do so in 
really fine print on the page. Basically, it's better to not publish a story at all than to publish a story that is partly true or misleading. Think back to our first few lessons and remember that you have an obligation to report things truthfully and accurately and you should take that power seriously. Not only do you need to worry about being truthful and accurate, but you also must commit yourself to being as fair and balanced as possible when working as a journalist. There are things that every one of us feels strongly about or are passionate about from our favorite sports team to our thoughts on religion and politics. As a journalist, you should always try to keep those things from influencing you to show any type of favoritism or particular disapproval towards any subject whatsoever. In fact, if there is something you're involved in or you're passionate about that you know influences you, you should actually tell your audience about this and admit to it whenever conflicts arise so that your audience knows where you're coming from. In fact, I'll do it right now. I'll admit when I showed this picture earlier, I picked this picture because I happen to be a pretty big Spurs fan when it comes to basketball. So that kind of influenced which picture I selected for this lesson. You have to know yourself well and understand that your values, your likes and dislikes can easily slip their way into your writing or storytelling and make your story unfair. You must be fair and make sure you give a fair chance to the ideas and individuals you don't personally agree with and actually share their views and opinions without you commenting on it. In fact, you should bend over backwards and do everything you can to find sources and subjects from all sides and give them all a chance to respond to anything you're planning on publishing so that their voice is heard and they have a fair chance even if their ideas aren't popular or well liked. Never ever try to impose your views on someone else when reporting the news. Doing so is a major violation of journalism ethics. In being fair, you should also try to tell stories for those that don't have a voice or who may have a hard time speaking up for themselves. But when doing so, make sure you're reporting the news of the story and not working unfairly for a specific cause. A part of being fair also means that you're careful with what you write and you avoid stereotyping by race, gender, age, religion, ethnicity, where someone is from, their sexual orientation, the way they look, or their social status. When writing, leave these things, both positive and negative, out of it and simply report on people the same way. Finally, you should always be open to criticism, both good and bad, and even invite people to share their thoughts and views on what you write and how you write it. Because you're human, and even when you have the best intentions, you will sometimes make mistakes. It's important that you listen to people so that you hear about mistakes you might have made, and then that you correct those mistakes and admit you're wrong promptly in the same manner in which you publish them. So if you made an error in your column one week, it would be important for you to go back the next week and print what's called a redaction like this. To be a great journalist and to have an impact on your readers and viewers and the society around you, you always have to hold yourself to the highest standard of journalism ethics and you should hold others around you to the same standards too. In the next lesson, you'll learn about the obligations you have between your sources, your subjects, and yourself, and how that connects to your obligation to truth, accuracy, and fairness.